Here we go. Look in the city and shied from the tape and also did no favors to good land has been brought back in luck in the city trades the field as it is thunder rose making it early from tom avian on the inside is good lad being followed by the graveyard bookie next on the outside in the orange and white is big d tracked by can't resist it and then dancing dame one bright blue rose last but one, and luck in the city, who veered off course at the start, is the back marker. Thunder Rose the leader, by two lengths to good land, just second from Tom Avian. These are followed by the graveyard bookie and can't resist it, racing together. Big D next on the outside of Dancing Dame with the final couple. One bright blue rose, and luck in the city. Continuing on in the still Early phases, and good lads through on the inside to pick off. Thunder Rose, two lengths back to in third place, the great Tom Avian, then can't resist it. The Graveyard Bookie next, and then Big D with the final three. Dancing Dame, luck in the city. Relegates one bright blue rose to be the back marker, mile and a half to go. Good lad and Paddy Hanlon. Lead on straightening up from Thunder Rose. Derek O'Connell, then Tom Avian, Harry Swan third. There's a little light in his hands and then can't resist it. And the graveyard bookie and Big D. Luck in the city on the outside of Dancing Dame. And finally, one bright blue rose. Coming up to pass the winning post with a mile and a quarter to go. As the field elect to keep out from the inside rail. Good land. In the lead from Thunder Rose Tom Avian. The Graveyard Bookie is next with Can't Resist It. As they make the run just outside the final nine furlongs. In race seven, and the last, the Eric Brown Memorial Bumper over two miles. Running off the bend, good lad. Brought back in, followed by Thunder Rose, Tom Avian. The Graveyard Bookie, Can't Resist It, Big D. has three behind Dancing Dame Luck in the city. And finally, one bright blue rose as they cross over to the point at which they started. Less than a mile to go. Good lad has re-established a lead over Thunder Rose, joined for second by Tom Avian. And then the graveyard bookie and can't resist it. Big D, luck in the city, the palish jacket on the outside of Dancing Dame and one bright blue rose. Little changes in the order. Good lad. And Paddy O'Hanlon by four to five lengths at the bend, the far point of the track. From Thunder Rose, Derek O'Connor just holding on to second for the time being, alongside as Tom Avian and Harry Swan. Then can't resist to Josh Williamson, just fourth. From the Graveyard Bookie and Raymond Barron. And then Big D, Dancing Dame Luck in the City. And finally, one bright blue rose. Tightly grouped, less than five furlongs to go. The leader is good land. Has come back to Thunder Rose, Tom Avian poised. On the inside is can't resist it. Edging closer is Luck in the City on the outside of the Graveyard Bookie and then Big D, Dancing Dame. And although br one bright blue rose is the back marker, very much in touch as they really tighten on the turn into the straight. Three furlongs to go is Good Lad leading a stacking field for the final turn from Thunder Rose. Then Tom Avian can't resist it next with Big D around the outside. Luck in the City with the Graveyard Bookie, Dancing Dame and one bright blue rose swinging in. Just over two furlongs to go. And the Eric Brown Memorial Bumper, good lads come under pressure. Tom Avian is coming there on the outside, having to switch Big D. Then can't resist it. Luck in the city and Thunder Rose, followed by the Graveyard Bookie, Dancing Damon, one bright blue rose. They race to the final furlong, and Tom Avian has come to challenge. Good lad on the far side, Big D. Many in with chances. Here's Luck in the city on the outside with a wet sail. Then can't resist it. And Dancing Dame, Luck in the city is produced. Close to the line to win it from Big D, Dancing Dame can't resist it next to the inside. It's two from two and festival bumpers for Patrick and William Mullins. Well, what a way to end the day here at Listel. Patrick Mullins taking the concluding Eric Brown Memorial bumper to record his 800th career winner. Patrick, firstly, many congratulations. What a landmark that is. We'll just deal with the race first of all. It could also have gone so horribly wrong. Talk to me about the start. 
Yeah, well, I, I just thought walking the track that maybe doing a circle at the start was, was for the best of the ground. Um, but uh, no, look, he just we walked up, there was no one going on, and when the tape went back, he just whipped. And um, luckily for me, no one wanted to make the running, so it's taken the lads a few seconds to go on, and then they've gone slow, so I've been able to make up the ground. So I wouldn't worry, the ground I lost wasn't the end of the world, but I was in the wrong position for a slow run race. And the horse has done really well, hasn't he? It turned into a right sprint finish at this race. Done very well because you know he did not flash you at home. Um, like that was a, that was a pleasant surprise. And um, but he is a flat pedigree, so obviously his speed helped there. The worry was then the, would he handle the ground, and obviously he did. So the Brook Houses have the stallion, and um, he looks a nice type for for going forward. Let's deal with this landmark then. 800 career winners. Were you aware that you were on the brink of that figure? Uh, yeah, yeah. I sort of had it. I sort of had it. Um, I was kind of keeping track of it. I thought I might get to it at Christmas, and we've had a great summer. But Barbara White doesn't miss much. She texted me earlier in the day, so um, herself, and Martin Murphy, didn't uh, didn't miss it. So, look, I'm, I'm riding William Mullins' horses. Um, that makes it a lot easier. A lot of lads in there who could have done it riding those horses and I think today probably probably shows that. <laughs> Patrick, take us back to the start. What were your ambitions starting off? Did you ever think a figure like that could be possible? No, I um, you know I thought I wouldn't ride for very long. That was a Willie talk because I was quite tall. I wanted to lose my seven, then I wanted to lose my claim, then I wanted to ride more win winners than Willie. Uh, then Ted had the, the record for overall winners, five, four, six, and we got that. And I, look, I'd like to get to a thousand. I know Derek and Jamie have done it in point of points. Um, so I'd like to do it on the track, and that's the next aim. What age are you now? Still early 30s, aren't you? 33, so hopefully I could get there before I'm 40, all being well. And is it, just talk to us there about the dedication involved, because you are a tall guy. How much work goes into just keeping the weight in check? Uh, look, for being an, an amateur in Ireland, like, it's, I'm comfortable. Um, you know, I wake up 11.7, so if I have to sweat to get down to, you know, 11.4 or whatever, 11.2, 11 stone, that's every so often, and it's normally for a good ride, so Everything I do is to ride good horses, it's not an effort. Um, there's lots of other fellas doing it to ride bad horses and that's an effort. You seem like you're enjoying it every bit as much as ever, would that be fair? How could you not? <laughs> How could you not when they're, you know, it's, it's, uh, when they're running like they are? And I think it's just, you know, like I said, anything is possible when you're riding Willie Mullins' horses and that's why I, I want to do as much as I can because I have the opportunity to do it. And I know you told me earlier on in the week you're looking forward to riding the horse on Wednesday. Is it a two and a half mile bumper? You could move on to 801 pretty quickly, could you? Yeah, it'd be great to get, get going quickly. Um, Trada Tutara um, runs, I, I think we're, she was unlucky in Wexford the last day, the third horse won since. Um, so I think she, she should be able to uh, gain conversation. Yeah. Uh, we touched on this earlier on in the week. You are still leading the actual National Hunt Jockeys Championship outright. What would be a good result for you in terms of that? I mean, is that something that motivates you? Would you like to finish maybe in the top three or four? Um, look, it would be great. I, 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 the, the record that, uh, was six, I got 63 one year, which was in the year I got the calendar record about Billy, Glee, Billy Parkinson. So uh, to try and beat that would be, I'm kind of slightly ahead of where I was this time that year at the moment, but uh, I had a lot of winners in December that year riding professional horses. Um, so uh, look, uh, I think Ted actually had more winners than the leading professional one year, Ted Walsh, and that's why they brought in the 21 professional rides. So. Um, that's a bit of a limit, I have to blame Ted for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you'll be up there for a while yet anyway, the way you're going. Patrick, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on that great figure. Great, thanks Appreciate so much, Gary. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.